How's it going everybody? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP tutorial. In this video, we are doing part three of JIT.gen, where we are going to start to talk about 3D geometry and how that works in Max MSP. So strap in, because uh, it's going to get a little complicated, but hopefully this introduction will be like a good foundation to make all of it make sense over the next couple videos as well. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? First things first, we gotta get set up. We need our JIT.world. And in this case, it's specifically very important that we use JIT.world because you have to use JIT.world in order to enable Max's 3D rendering engine. Um, and we're gonna set the same attributes that we always set at floating one, so it's floating and doesn't disappear, at FSAA1 for full screen anti-aliasing, and FS menu bar so there is no menu bar when we go full screen. We're gonna press T, create a toggle, patch it in, lock the patch by command clicking in the blank space, click that toggle, turn it on, and now our world is rendering. So we are all set up there. The next step is we need to bring in our jit.gen object that we are learning about, and we need to send it that initial matrix. So we're gonna say jit.matrix three float 32 uh, because OpenGL 3D geometry stuff really likes float 32. I highly recommend always using float 32 when you're dealing with 3D 3D geometry. And we're going to say 100 by 100 to create the dimensions of our 3D shape. Now, once we patch that into the jit.gen, we just need to send a bang to the matrix to send it through the patch cord to initialize everything. And I'm just going to take this little middle inlet of the jit.world, which uh, sends out a bang every time this frame updates. So that's super useful. Um, and we are now going to go into the jit.gen object. And again, this is the default window when you create a jit.gen object. We don't really need this stuff at the moment, so we're going to delete some of it. We just have to leave this in one here, but we're not actually using it because this is just a blank matrix to initialize the jit.gen. We're not going to use that matrix um, to do anything visual. In fact, all we're going to do is we're going to create a 3D object by creating an object with a 3D name in it. And there are a few basic shapes we get. There's sphere, which will create a sphere. There's torus, which will create a uh, donut shape. And there are a few others. There's cone, there's a cylinder, and there's circle. Um, there are a lot of basic shapes that we can play with. And all of these um, basically will just render that 3D geometric shape. So let's just take the sphere, let's patch it to the out one. And um, now your first instinct might be to patch this into a jit.gl video plane. Um, because that's the object I talk about a lot in these videos. And if you do that, this is what it's going to look like. And that obviously is not a sphere, except that it is. This matrix, this is the matrix view of the three of uh, the X, Y, Z coordinate system that actually creates our 3D sphere. But because we attach it to a video plane, we're seeing them as like 2D matrices rather than that 3D shape. We need a new object to construct the 3D shape for us to actually see it as a 3D shape. And that object is jit.gl.mesh, which definitely very soon is going to have its full tutorial own video because uh, there is so much with this object. But real simply, we can just now patch that jit.gen into the jit.gl mesh, and this is our sphere. Now it's very close, um, and it doesn't look very spherical because there's no lighting. So we also need a few other GL objects um, that we'll talk about. Uh, to handle the 3D space that we're dealing with. And those objects are JitGL camera, which we will say at position. And we're gonna say 004, um, which will move us back in the Z direction, thus making our circle, our sphere appear smaller. The second object we need is JIT.GL light, which will add a light source into our 3D world. Now this doesn't change anything just yet, um, but there's now, a, you know, another light source in here that we can control. Um, really what we need to make this look very spherical is we need to attach a jit.gl material to the GL mesh, which will let us do stuff um, to make it look nice and fancy. And then we have to go into the GL mesh, and this is probably the most important step, and we have to say at auto normals one, because we didn't actually pass any normals. The normals... Um, Normals are the part of the 3D object um, that calculate how light plays into it. So now that we set auto normals, based on the sphere shape and uh, the, the matrix we're passing through to the JGL mesh, it's able to auto calculate what nor where the normal should be. Um, and now that we put this GL light in here, um, it's calculating that light on those normals and giving us 
the actual sphere look. And we can also move the light around in a few different ways. I'm going to do it by using the rotate X, Y, Z. And you see the light is coming at this angle. Uh, and that's because by default, it's set to like 32 or point something, I think, um, which is all the way up here. So if I just say we're at rotate X, Y, Z, zero, 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 bam, we are now centered our light on that sphere, which is pretty cool. There are a lot of geo objects uh, that I just introduced that are all very, very advanced like they can all do a lot of different things and I'm kind of just you know bree breezing by that but that's because that's not what this video is about and we will talk about all of this much more in depth very soon um just for now kind of accept that that is what it needs to be in order to get this to work um and let's go back into the jit.gen because here's where the magic is going to happen because there are a few other jot gen objects that we need to talk about um one of those objects being the mix object which is very similar to a few of the other objects we talked about um but it lets us do some cross fading interpolation and we can do that with these 3d shapes so if we just patch the sphere into this left inlet which says output if zero and we patch the torus into the right inlet which says uh output if interpret one we then have this uh rightmost outlet which is the interpolation factor. And we can use that to interpolate between them. Now, by default, I think it's set to 0.5. So this is actually our interpolate uh, at like, it's a half sphere, half torus kind of thing. And it looks pretty cool. Um, let's bring in the param object and we'll say, um, we'll give it a name, I don't know, fading or something. I don't I don't really know. You can call whatever you want. Um, we're gonna patch that into the interpolation outlet. And because I said fading zero, uh, this is now set to zero, which means that this is our output. Because if it's zero, uh, you're going to have the sphere at 100%. And now we can go back into the main max window. We can say prepend to uh, create a message with the name fading, which we created. Patch that into the jit.gen object. And then we're going to create a flow number box by pressing F. I'm going to patch that into the fading object. I'm just going to slowly turn that up. And you'll see uh, as I'm doing such now, it is slowly morphing from that sphere into a torus of sorts um and you can get this cool like pulsing animation if you if you want um and we could do that with all of these sh shapes um and they would all look pretty cool but we're not gonna do that exactly you could if you want to that's just gonna take a lot to set up i'm gonna leave that up to you uh <laughs> to do uh an experiment with i'm just gonna show these two for now um to kind of make things simple and clear and concise um and so with that, we can now have fun also just morphing this 3D shape in a lot of other ways. Because as I had mentioned when we were talking about the video plane thing, this is just a matrix. And it's these matrix combined together that makes this shape. So we can similarly swizz out those matrices uh, like such by using the swizz X and swizz Y and swizz Z and affect each X, Y, Z coordinate individually and then pack them all back together with the vect object that we talked about as well. And if we just patch these back in, we will construct our sphere again. Um, but now we can, you know, add or subtract or multiply or do whatever we want to the data in between to morph this shape. So let's just uh, bring in something that's gonna do that. Um, let's bring that inlet two back in. And let's start by adding uh, whatever we're going to pass through that second inlet into our X uh, matrix. So now we have that inlet two back again, and that's cool. And we're going to just move some stuff out of the way. And I'm going to create a jit.noise. And with that jit.noise, I don't know, I'm going to say three float 32. I'm going to say 20 by 20. Um, we're just going to patch that in there. Create a button by pressing B. Patch that into the jit.noise. Lock the patch. Click that button. And there we go. We just added noise to the x dimension of our 3d shape and so it kind of got distorted on that x dimension and that looks really really cool um now you notice it kind of grew from the center out to the right that's because we only added random positive values between zero and one so we're going to go back into jit.gen real fast and we're going to do some math to make this value uh go between negative one and one. So we're gonna actually, to do that, we're gonna multiply it by two, so it goes between zero and two, and then we're gonna subtract one, so that moves it down to be between negative one and one. And now you see it's recentered again. So that's pretty cool, and we can keep going. Let's uh, copy this. I'm gonna click the object, 
hold the Option key down and drag to copy. And then we are going to click that object, hold the Shift button down, and drag to uh, place it in between this patch cord right here. And then we're going to just create another patch cord and add it to our Y direction. And you see now that we're adding to the X and the Y, it gets um, stretched diagonally uh, because it's the same values. But that's okay. That's kind of a cool look anyway. And let's just see also what happens if we add it to the Z direction. Um, could be interesting. Um, and yeah, so okay, now we're going diagonally, but out more towards the Z. So that all makes sense. Um, we can try other things. Instead of adding, let's switch the Y one to a multiply. Um, and we get that cool shape. Let's also switch the Z one to a multiply. Um, that looks pretty cool too. Um, and it's, you know, more centered this way. So that's awesome. Um, and we can make this super fancy actually by um, just adding in some more switching objects. Uh, we've talked about mix, we talked about select, but we have not talked about the question mark object, which is our conditional ternary oper <laughs> operator. Um, it's basically uh, very similar to just checking if a, something is true or false and you know whether what our outlet's going to be. So you can think of it uh, as being very similar to that select object. So basically we're going to have you know one uh, range of patch cord going into this, which you know if the value is true, then it's going to be this that is our output. And if the value is false, then it's going to be this one, which can be our multiply. Um, and then it's just the left inlet to check. So it's looking for a zero or a one, zero being false, one being true. And depending on what it receives, that is what its output is going to be. Um, so we just got to do that. And we kind of have to set this up maybe for all of them. So let's just also do that real quick. I'm going to create an addition, add conditionary, patch that into the middle, take this patch cord, make it the rightmost, and then patch this to the output. Same thing one more time with the Z. We're going to copy the add. We're going to patch the Swiss Z into that. We're going to take this, patch that, add that, add that to the middle inlet. This can go to the rightmost, and that will then go into our last for our Z. And now we have these open inlets to check for the zero or ones. So let's bring in, um, let's bring in more param objects to do that. We're going to say param um, x1. Yeah, and we'll patch that into there, and we'll also have that just by default be zero. Um, and then we'll do param y1, patch that in there, and param z1, and patch that in there. So these are all set to zero by default. I'll move them so they're a little bit closer to what they're actually controlling. Um, and then we can go back into the main max window once again, and we can then create those uh, messages using the prepend object. So x1, y1, z1. And then we're going to use a decide object, which randomly picks a 1 or a 0. And we'll patch that into all of these. Patch that into the jit.gen. And then these just need a bang um, in order to determine their output. So let's uh, take from this middle inlet again, and we'll give us ourselves some room. We'll patch these into that middle inlet, and you'll see it's gonna start freaking out really fast, although that actually I think looks kinda cool. Um, but that's because it's outputting and changing every frame, and that might be too fast. So we can actually slow that down with a speed limit object. And we just define in milliseconds how slow we want to slow things down. And if we patch this, these patch cords through this now, a bang is going to come out here, and then it's not going to let another bang through for 200 milliseconds. So we get more of that, um, which looks pretty cool. Um, so now it's kind of just, you know, quick, quick changes. That's okay. We can we can make this fancier. We can go in here and we can bring uh, the mix back into things and mix some more stuff together. So let's say we wanted um, you know just either the normal Swizz X or this conditionary Terminator stuff we've been doing. We'll patch that into there 
Same thing with this guy. Um, we'll take the Y, patch that into that one, this into that, and then repeat for the Z. Um, cool. And then we'll create some more param objects again. This is starting to get a little bit messy, um, but uh, hopefully it'll all be okay. We'll do param xfade by default, set it to zero. Copy this, this can be y fade. And this can be z fade. And now that we've got that in there, we can um, copy all this and just change the message names appropriately. Um, X fade, Y fade, Z fade. Um, and to make this a little bit more interesting, rather than just being one or zero, I want that slide in there because we can get that slide in there with the fade, um, you know, as we see right here. So let's just do the same thing here and we'll make that slide happen by using a line and we'll set the uh, length to be the same as our speed limb. So every, it'll take, you know, one cycle of that bang to get to the next shape and then go from there right on to the next value. So we can just do that, slide these in here, holding the shift button down, copy, uh, and same thing, create the patch cords. And repeat. And then we'll pull out bangs from the speed limb for all of these. And lastly, patch these all into the jit.gen object once again. And you know what, just for fun, let's create one more, which um, we will just use to be the this fade value. And I just realized I put all of these in the wrong patch cords, which is why I think it looks funny. So we gotta make sure the interpolation goes in the right most inlet there we go that looks better that's how it's supposed to look and that is pretty cool and if we want as a very last step we can just add some color by taking our jit.noise attaching that into the first leftmost inlet of the jit.gl material and then let's just take the speed limb bang and have it trigger a new noise as well um, which will then change the color and there you go. That is pretty cool. And that's pretty much it. There are a lot of different ways uh, and we can do 3D geometry in Max, and um, that's what we're going to look at in the next video, I think. Um, but this is a, hopefully a pretty cool, clear introduction, and I think it's very important to know that you can create 3D geometry in JIT.gen um, using those objects, and then that we can like mess around with them in the same way. Um, I know this one was a lot more than a lot of the other videos have been um so hopefully it all makes sense um if there are any things that you feel still need some clarification please feel free to ask that in the comments down below and i'll do my best to answer them as always thank you so much for watching if you learned anything please remember to like and subscribe because that's how i know that uh you learned something and i really always appreciate seeing uh when you guys do that it means a lot to me and yeah thank you so much uh, with that, I will see you in the next video.